going to be moving to member statements. I recognize the member for Thunder Bay Atacokan. Thank you, Speaker. Thunder Bay has a strong hockey community with no fewer than seven players currently in the NHL coming from our great city and region. In fact, Thunder Bay in northwestern Ontario has produced the highest number of NHL players per capita than any other city. But today I'd like to speak to you about the Lake Edge University Thunder Wolves hockey team. The Thunder Wolves had an outstanding season this year, capturing their first OUA West Division crown since 2008. This was a major achievement for the team, and they should be commended for their hard work and dedication. It's important to recognize the individual achievements of the team as well. Head coach Andrew Wilkins was named OUA West Coach of the Year, while defenseman Josh Van Unen was awarded OUA West Rookie of the Year. Defenseman Troy Williams was also recognized for his contributions to equity, diversity, and inclusion within the team. In addition, forward Spencer Blackwell earned an OUA West Division First Team All-Star Team nod, and defenseman Kyle Auger received an OUA West Division Second Team All-Star Team nod. As well, Josh Ben Unen and goaltender Christian Chichago were named the OUA West Division All-Rookie Team. In conclusion, the Lakehead Thunder Wolves hockey team had a fantastic season and their achievements are a testament to their hard work and dedication. I congratulate them on their success and I will look forward to see what they will do, will they accomplish in the future. Thank you. Member statements, I recognize the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I rise this morning to give this house good news. Troublemaker Radio is back. What is Troublemaker Radio, Speaker? Troublemaker Radio is a podcast we started up in our MPP office to lift up and spotlight the hard work of community organizers who sometimes have to ruffle a few feathers to get some things done. It is inspired by the great American politician, Representative John Lewis, who once said, do not get lost in a sea of despair. Be hopeful. Be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It is the struggle of a lifetime. Never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. President Biden's in our country today, and I wish him well, and I wish him all the best in his meetings with the Prime Minister. But when I think about the great legacy of our friends and neighbours in the United States, I think of John Lewis, who we lost in 2020. And I'm excited to tell this House that our first episode of Troublemaker Radio that we're going to be bringing back is going to feature someone who's going to make a lot of great trouble in this place. Sarah Jama, Speaker, someone who's going to roll into this place next Monday and who's going to give us the kind of spirit from the great city of Hamilton we so desperately need in this place. Give us that optimism. Give us that courage to fight for social justice. I am so glad to feature a conversation with Sarah Jama on Troublemaker Radio. I invite all members of this House to tune in because we have a lot to learn from her and we have a lot to learn from each other. If you have ideas on what we should put on the podcast, shoot me an email. We can't wait to talk to you. Member statements and recognize the member for Oakville. Thank you, Speaker. It's uh, an honor to rise in the legislature today. And, and before I uh, get into my member statement, I would like to wish all those uh, people celebrating the beginning of Ramadan, uh, Ramadan Mubarak. Yes. Speaker, we have taken concrete action to support workers in this province. We've had recent legislation that's increased the fines for employers who do not comply with health and safety laws. We've established foundational rights and protections for digital platform workers, such as e-rideshare and delivery workers. We are also addressing Ontario's historic labour shortage by allowing out-of-province workers to register in their profession or trade within 30 days, helping them find good jobs faster. Our government is committed to continuing this work and improving the employment experience for all workers. Just on Tuesday this week, our government announced it is tackling the province's labour shortage and getting more people into rewarding skills in the skilled trades. In my town of Oakville, we are proud to be home to two great labour organizations, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 793, led by Mike Gallagher, and we're also fortunate to have the Labourers International Union of North America, also known as LIUNA, led by Joseph Mancinelli, who is the International Vice President and Regional Manager of Central and Eastern Canada. So I want to take this time to acknowledge and thank them for their critical role in building Ontario's infrastructure. We're proud to have you based in Oakville. And to all the workers here in Ontario, thank you for contributing to the work of Ontario. Member statements. I recognize the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. 
20 years ago, I arrived in Toronto with my family, like so many immigrants before us, searching for a better life. We started to rebuild our lives, and the city services were there to help us along the way. I used to spend hours at the Parkdale Library working on my university applications. As a young woman, I felt safe on public transit, exploring all that the city had to offer. I fell in love with Toronto. It was a place full of optimism, potential, and promise. Over the years, I've seen the city's spark slowly fade away. The decline is hard to ignore. We have big issues to tackle, like affordable housing, reliable transit, climate emergency, and a new deal on city finances. But the city must also be able to deliver basic services properly. Right now, walk out the door, there's garbage everywhere, overflowing and broken bins. Winter comes every year, and we still haven't figured out proper snow clearing. Homelessness has spiked with more and more unhoused people seeking refuge on the TTC because there isn't space in the shelter. Bot holds on every street. The limited recreation programs for kids are getting even fewer. Basic things aren't being delivered. We've all been worn down by the last 12 years. It's time to turn the corner. We cannot be a world-class city without first getting the basic things right. To my fellow Torontonians, a mayoral by-election is upon us. We have an opportunity here. Let's get the basics right. Let's demand it. Further debate, I recognize the member for Glengarry Dundas South. Dundas. Cornwall Typhoons girls hockey team on winning the 2023 Good Deeds Cup by Chevrolet Canada. The official announcement was made by Hockey Night in Canada host Ron McLean Saturday night. The Good Deeds Cup is a challenge for minor hockey teams across Canada to take the values they learn on the ice, determination, leadership and teamwork, and use them to support the communities off the ice. I want to acknowledge and congratulate the players, Annika, Makia, Haley, Charlotte, Maya, Annabella, Mackenzie, Leighton, Tegan, Abigail, Sarah, Lexi, Olivia, Embry, Jane, Sloan, and Lily, as well as their coaches, trainers, managers, and the parents for their efforts in supporting and inspiring our community. With over 300 good deeds performed, the team won the grand prize of $100,000 to donate to a charity. The Typhoons chose the Beyond 21 Foundation in Cornwall, who do important work. Beyond 21 helps adults with de developmental disabilities identify their dreams and empowering them to learn the skills and build the connections they need to achieve them. Once again, congratulations to the U13A Cornwall Typhoons girls hockey team. You have certainly made a big difference in the lives of many in Stormont, Dundas and South Glengarry. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for London North Centre. Speaker, everyone in London recognizes the homelessness crisis and understands the dire need to ensure unhoused, marginalized Londoners have supports to rebuild their lives and finally be safe. More than 200 people have died on London streets in the past three years. No one among us should be able to turn and look away from human suffering and preventable tragedy. In response to this mounting crisis, London City Council engaged a broad spectrum of Londoners in their health and homelessness summits. They created a collaborative plan known as the Health and Homelessness Whole of Community System Response, which will create 24-7 community hubs with on-site care, as well as build the desperately needed 100 supportive housing units this year and 600 in total. London leaders have stepped up. After an, an historic $25 million gift by an anonymous London family, millions more have been donated by London's amazing business and community leaders who've rallied to join the fight. The Health and Homelessness Fund for Change, fundforchange.ca, is administered by the London Community Foundation. The need is there, community support is there, and engagement is there. London is a leader speaker, but we can't do it alone. The province now has the chance to stand with London and support this noble and worthy cause. I echo the calls of community leaders, experts, local organizations, and city council. I encourage the province to provide emergency homelessness funding to London in the 2023 budget. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Windsor Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, local politics in Windsor Essex was turned on its head this month. The revelation, you ask? The new Lego Windsor and Essex politics page on Instagram. Riley Richard, the page's creator, depicts local political leaders from across our region in all of their four-centimeter yellow minifigure glory. 
Riley's mission to reverse declining voter engagement through creativity and positivity in politics. Riley's many human skills shine through in his work. His graphic design, his knowledge of history, and his knack for noticing detail right down to our hair. If our legislature is destined to have young Ontarians like Riley sitting here in these very seats in the future, we can truly be optimistic for a bright number of years ahead. I encourage all Ontarians to visit Lego Windsor Polly on Instagram to see Riley's handiwork in action. Riley, on behalf of all of us here at the Ontario Legislature, thank you so, so much for being part of the solution. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Kingston and the Islands. Uh, thank you, Speaker. In 2018, this Premier and his Conservatives promised to cut hydro rates by 12 per cent. Rates went up. A couple of years later, the Premier reimagined his promise. Rates still went up. Now the government is spending $6 billion a year, an enormous chunk of the budget, about as much as it spends on long-term care, to hide the cost of electricity. Are you worried about housing, cost of living, health care or education? Here's the truth. This government's hydro shell game doesn't help. If we build new hydroelectric, nuclear or natural gas plants, it will cost more than what we pay Sir. on our hydro bills. And I can see I'm upsetting the, the government members here because I'm telling the truth. What we need is electricity that really costs less. Conservation is still the cheapest way to go. Solar and wind with storage has become comparable to other sources of power and continues to get cheaper. You can rely on both of these to avoid price spikes from overseas turmoil. There's been no long-term energy plan since before the Conservative government. Six years, and six years later, and all we have is an election cycle plan. The economy is a big ship. Household budgets taken together are a big ship. We need a plan. We can't change the subsidy by a lot all of a sudden, but future electricity usage is sensitive to plans for housing, transportation, industrial strategy, so the plan can't be delegated to the IESO. It has to be done at Thank you very much. <laughs> member statements. The member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. It may be budget day, but it's hockey day every day in this country, and based on yeah. my member's statement, that's what I want to talk about today. It is my pleasure to rise in this House today to share an exciting opportunity for the community of West Lorne that is in the western edge, on the western edge of my riding in Elgin, Middlesex, London. Impressively, Speaker, West Lorne is the only Ontario finalist for the Craft Hockeyville competition. This is a Canadian competition with West Lorne again being the only community representing our province with promise and pride. The winning community will get to host a future NHL game and receive $250,000 to upgrade their arena. Speaker, West Lawrence arena dressing rooms are too small, and get this, and of late, it's often to keep their ice frozen. Just imagine, just imagine a growing and thriving community in Canada with a faulty ice rink. Over the past 17 years, Hockey Craftville has proudly awarded $4.5 million to 93 communities throughout Canada, and we thank them for their hometown support. Speaker, voting for this competition opens on March 31st at 9 a.m. and closes on April 1st at 5 p.m. I sincerely ask and encourage all members of this legislature and those watching from home to support our small town, southwestern Ontario community of West Lorne. For more details on how to vote, you can Google Craft Hockey Bill. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Whitby. Hey. Thank you, Speaker. Durham College, in my writing, is partnering with the Schulich Foundation, who recently announced a game-changing program, Schulich Builders, a scholarship program dedicated to students pursuing a career in the skilled trades. In its first year of operation, more than $3 million wow. is committed to combat labour shortages and to highlight the importance of the skilled trades, with $300,000 going directly to Durham College students. Wow. Don Lavisa, the president of Durham College, says that with these scholarship speakers, they will continue to lead the way 
by developing knowledgeable and experienced skilled trade graduates able to step into rewarding careers that can make a difference in Durham communities. Speaker, I'm proud to promote the skilled trades and support Durham Region students pursuing their rewarding career path in the skilled trades. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our member statements this morning.